In this first lecture, we'll be looking at constellations and the celestial sphere. This photograph is taken along the western horizon after sunset uh, in the winter. And so uh, the stars that you see up in the night sky change from season to season, as we'll see, but the relative pattern always is the same. So this uh, constellation is the constellation Orion. Uh, it's easy to see because these three stars in a row are Orion's belt and they really stand out in the night sky. The star up here is Betelgeuse. This one down here is uh, Rigel. Um, the, the Seven Sisters or the Pleiades is a little star cluster um, that's uh, uh, also in the western sky and this bright object is the planet Venus. So in this unit we'll be talking about um, kind of the the early development of constellations and their modern definitions. So constellations are cultural inventions. Many cultures around the world have uh, come up with their own set of constellations. Uh, this uh, illustration is of uh, the kind of the Western tradition uh, and that uh, is, are the roots of the modern constellations that we have uh, today in, in, in astronomy. Here's a simulation of the of the night sky. Again, this is showing the constellation Orion. There's the Orion's belt, Betelgeuse and Rigel. There's the Pleiades again. Uh, this simulation is made with uh, the program Stellarium, which you'll all be using in class. Uh, and you can use this program to simulate um, uh, what the night sky looks like anywhere on Earth for, you know, thousands of years into the future or the past. Uh, in this depiction, uh, we've drawn uh, stick figure representations of the different constellations and labeled them. So again, we see Orion. Here's the torso of the Orion, the hunter. There's his bow. Uh, maybe this is an arm sticking up. Here's Taurus the bull. And here's Canis Major, which is the dog that accompanies Orion on, on his hunts. This stick figure representation is a way of recognizing the pattern of the stars in the night sky, uh, even though the stick figures themselves don't look much like the figures they're supposed to represent. Here's an alternate view. So this uh, shows an artist's conception of what the constellations might look like. So again, we have Orion here. Looks like uh, he's got he's like wielding a club up there with his right hand. There's his dog. Looks like the dog is chasing a rabbit, Lupus. And there's apparently he's being apparently chased by a, a unicorn. Uh, and uh, there's Taurus. Uh, there's Cetus, which is a uh, uh, which is a sea monster or a whale. Anyway, uh, this is a more uh, fanciful depiction of what the constellations might might look like. You have to have a pretty good imagination to see this if you're just looking up at the sky just with your eyes. I thought I would also show you what some other cultures saw in or see in the night sky. So in the Mayan tradition, uh, Orion's belt is actually a turtle. And instead of Taurus the bull, there's an owl. And vul uh, Vulture is over here, which is, I believe, where Cetus was. So, you know, the point is that different cultures saw different things in the night sky. Some patterns of stars are represented in many cultures. So, for example, Orion's belt shows up in many, many different cultures because it really does stand out in the night sky. The Maori culture, uh, which is in New Zealand, saw Orion as part of a sailing vessel. They were, you know, a seafarer, so they they navigated across the South Pacific uh, using the stars, so it makes sense that their constellations would represent that. And the Lakota in North America um, uh, see, like, a hand. Uh, there's a, a sacred elements from their culture which are represented in the stars. So again, every, every, every culture has a very unique set of constellations. In 1928, 
the International Astronomical Union recognized an official 88 constellations. In this definition, every patch of sky belongs to some constellation. So we now have 88 constellation states where these boundaries uh, mark the borders between different constellations. While this representation doesn't have the same aesthetic appeal as previous mythology-based constellations, it's what modern astronomers use. So this is just a summary. Uh, here's a uh, Here's a depiction of a, uh, of a modern star chart. We'll talk more about the things in the star chart a little bit later on. Every star belongs to a constellation. Uh, objects that move across the sky, such as the sun, moon, and planets, will move from constellation to constellation. Uh, the stars in a particular constellation usually have no physical relationship to each other. It's just that we they happen to lie in a similar direction in the night sky as viewed from the Earth. But uh, over time, or if you went to a different part of our galaxy, they would be, they would look completely different. So they're typically not physically related. And finally, um, the term asterism uh, is used to uh, refer to patterns of stars that are easily recognizable. So for example, Orion's belt just really stands out in the night sky. So Orion's belt is an asterism. It's part of the constellation Orion, uh, but it's not a constellation itself. The Big Dipper also is an asterism. It's part of the constellation Ursa Major, the Great Bear. So here's another example. Uh, this is again from the uh, Stellarium software. Uh, this is simulating looking north from Laverne. Uh, you can see here is the Big Dipper right here. There's the bowl of the Big Dipper. There's the handle. Uh, this is the handle of the Big Dipper is the tail of the, the bear. I mean, bears don't really have long tails, but uh, anyway, that's the way it's depicted. Um, there's a, a dra Draco is the dragon. Ursa Major is the Little Dipper right here. Um, and again, there's like all these different constellations you can see in the northern sky. The Big Dipper uh, can be used to navigate um, to find uh, due north. So if you find, if you locate the Big Dipper and then look at the end two stars in the Big Dipper, those are called the pointer stars, you can use those to trace through the sky to find this star right there, that's the North Star, or another word for it is Polaris. So that star marks due north. So the Big Dipper is uh, very useful for navigating because if you can find it, then you could find the North Star, then you know which, which way north is. And the North Star is also the end of the tail of the Little Dipper. So the Little Dipper comes arcing back down towards the handle of the Big Dipper. If you go out um, and just look up at the night sky, it appears to be stationary. So all the stars just appear to be fixed in the night sky. But if you go out um, and watch for a few, you know, tens of minutes or a few hours, you'll notice that the night sky actually rotates just like the sun and moon rise and set. But if you could speed up time, so up in the upper left-hand corner, you can see uh, the numbers are 2300 means 11 o'clock, so now we've just crossed midnight. This is simulating what the night sky is going to look like over the course of one evening in February. So you can see by the middle of the night, 2 a.m., the Big Dipper is now upside down and above the North Star, and now it starts circling around and now it starts to set or tries to set in the Northwest. If you could take a long exposure photograph of the night sky, this is what you might see. So this is taken from Mauna Kea, a professional observatory um, in Hawaii. So this is uh, uh, Mauna Loa, actually, which is a volcano that's been erupting for the last few months. But uh, this uh, object right there, that is the North Star. And you can see in a photograph that's that 
you, you leave the shutter open on the camera for several hours, the North Star doesn't move. It moves a little bit, but it doesn't move very much. As, as you go farther away from the North Star, these stars uh, leave longer streaks because they trace out larger circles in the night sky. So this, uh, this photograph actually shows nicely what the motion of the stars um, are um, as you look north from the northern hemisphere. There is a point which doesn't move at all in, uh, in the sky, and that's called the North Celestial Pole. So all stars, including the North Star, circle around that North Celestial Pole, but turns out that uh, the North Star is like less than a degree from the North Celestial Pole. So it's pretty close, pretty close to it. Let's see what the motion of the night sky looks like as we look south. So again, you might recognize Orion here. There's Orion's belt. Um, and let's set this in motion. So notice that now the stars are moving from left to right uh, uh, across the sky. When you look south, east is to your left and west is to your right. And so stars are still rising in the east and setting in the west. It just goes left to right instead of the other way when you look north. Uh, you also might notice that the stars appear to be circling around a point that appears to be below the horizon. So from the northern hemisphere, uh, the, the point that appears to be stationary is below the hemisphere and not, not visible. Again, here's a photograph uh, taken from the northern hemisphere. This is, uh, um, I believe this uh, image is taken in Iran. Uh, you can see that the stars are streaking across the, the southern sky and again, they appear to be circling around a point that's below the horizon. So to talk about um, the night sky more, uh, it's useful to introduce this concept of a celestial sphere. So the celestial sphere is an imaginary sphere centered on the Earth that like holds all the stars. So you, all the stars. So you might imagine all of the stars is being just like pasted on the celestial sphere. The point being that stars are so far away from us that you have no direct sense of their depth. It's hard to, you, you, can't, you can't tell how far a star is away from us. They all seem to be at the same distance uh, just from looking at them. So, of course, what's happening is that the Earth is really turning on its axis, and, and as the Earth spins around on its axis, it appears from our reference frame on the Earth that the celestial sphere is actually rotating around us. So if you could take the Earth's rotational axis, extend it out into space, the point at which the rotational axis intersects the celestial sphere is called the North Celestial Pole. So that point is directly above the North Pole in space. The South Celestial Pole is directly below uh, the South Pole on the Earth. Uh, so it's the other intersection of the Earth's rotation axis on the celestial sphere. And then there is a great circle that is on the celestial sphere that is directly above the Earth's equator called the celestial equator. So all points along the celestial equator lie directly above the Earth's equator. So finally, let's look at the effect of latitude on the, uh, on the night sky. So on the left, you can see the Earth turning on its axis under a fixed celestial sphere. That's like an inertial frame of reference. Um, the diagram on the right looks, shows us what the night sky appears to do from our moving reference frame on the surface of the Earth. It turns out that the altitude of the North Celestial Pole equals your latitude on Earth. So 
the altitude, which we'll see uh, in the next lecture, the altitude is the angle a star is above the horizon. So this, we'll call this angle alpha. That will be the altitude of the North Celestial Pole. And it turns out that that angle equals your latitude. We'll show that in just a minute. So suppose beta is your latitude. Here's a little drawing of the Earth. So, um, so there you are uh, on the surface of the Earth. We'll call beta is the angle above the equator. So that angle is beta. Then uh, this blue line, again, is a, it's a line that connects the center of the Earth to you and extends upward directly above you. The green line is going to represent your horizon as viewed from this location on the Earth. So the horizon is 90 degrees from the line connecting you to the center of the Earth. We'll now construct two parallel lines that point towards the North Celestial Pole or the North Star. So this line will go from the center of the Earth upwards towards the North Star. And then this line goes from your local point on the Earth up towards the North Star. So these two lines are parallel. Because these lines are parallel and this line that crosses them is a straight line, then that angle is the same as that angle. We'll label it phi. The altitude of Polaris, as seen from you, is given by alpha. So again, if this is your horizon, that's the direction in space towards the North Star, then that angle is the, the altitude of Polaris above the North horizon. So because alpha is a complementary angle to phi, uh, and so is beta, beta is also a complementary angle to phi, then alpha must equal beta from geometry, right? So, so this is a simple geometric proof that the altitude of the North Celestial Pole must equal your latitude on the Earth. All right, so for example, from Laverne, this angle is 34 degrees. Uh, Laverne's at a, at a latitude of 34 degrees north. So the angle of the North Celestial Pole to the horizon, that's 34 degrees. If you were to go to the North Pole, uh, which has a latitude of plus 90, then the North Celestial Pole would be directly above you. Right? So everything would just spin around that point that's straight above you. So in fact, no constellations would ever rise or set. They would always just circle around at a constant altitude uh, relative to the horizon. And if you go to the southern hemisphere, so Buenos Aires is around minus 34 degrees uh, latitude. So now the altitude of the North Star is a negative 34, and the South Celestial Pole will be 34 degrees above the South Southern uh, horizon. By the way, uh, stars that never rise are set. Uh, so there, are, if you go close enough to the North Star, some stars will just circle around forever and they'll never dip below the horizon. Those are called circumpolar stars. In the Northern Hemisphere, the circumpolar stars are around the North Celestial Pole. In the Southern Hemisphere, the circumpolar stars are around the South Celestial Pole. So here's another, there's the photograph that we looked at before taken from Mauna Kea. Uh, again, the North, North Star, or the, the North Celestial Pole, is equal to the altitude of the observer. Um, here are a couple more examples. The one on the right is taken from the Northern Hemisphere. There's the North Star, pretty stationary. The others are circling around it. The one on the left is taken from the Southern Hemisphere. So there is actually no, so uh, so uh, there is no South Star, right? Uh, it just turns out by random chance that there isn't a star that happens to be along the Earth's rotation axis um, in the southern direction. So there's just kind of an empty patch of sky there. And this is uh, a, a fisheye photograph uh, taken from Antarctica. 
showing uh, stars uh, spinning around the South Celestial Pole, uh, which is directly uh, straight overhead. All right, so uh, that's a basic introduction to uh, constellations and the night sky. In the next lecture, we're going to talk about coordinate systems uh, to be able to precisely locate uh, the positions of the stars.